Let's uh, speak to Maryam Barghouti, who's a writer and researcher. Uh, she's joining us from Ramallah. That's on the occupied West Bank. Hello, Maryam. Thanks so much for your time with us on Al Jazeera. I mean, um, important to note, as always, that Gaza, of course, is under blockade uh, by the Israelis 15 years on. But from what you're hearing about this attack and from, from what you understand uh, is going on, perhaps you can give us some context as to the lead up to this. Um, thank you for having me. So right now in Gaza, we are also, as you were mentioning earlier, there is negotiations and talks about the electricity crisis that is happening. And Gaza is almost a population of 2 million. Most of them are under the age of 18 that have been under siege for more than 15 years. And I'm concerned in terms of how the discourse is unraveling and what Israel is doing um, is that it's going to place the focus in that it's trying to target leaders of Jihad al-Islami um, and the assassination of Taysir al-Jabari without any context. Let's also recall how Israel consistently reports on Palestinians as though it has targeted and quote unquote neutralized um, terrorists and including uh, looking at the numbers of the martyrs as of yet, there's a five-year-old child that was killed. And this was preceded by bombings um, through Israeli uh, Air Force and drone strikes on Gaza just weeks before. And this comes at heightened um, times when Israel uh, is arming its settlers in the West Bank to shoot and kill Palestinians and not have to speak under, you know, the chain of command of a military. So what we're seeing right now is an intensification of Israel's military strategy of shock and awe. And right now it is not just, you know, the politicians. And let's keep in mind that Israeli elections are coming up in November and there's been this trend of Israeli leaders to use Gaza as a weapon to kind of rally the Israeli settler population. Right, but in terms of the, uh -huh. the, uh, the military commander that has been killed in this attack, is it clear to you whether uh, Taysir al-Jabari himself was the target of this attack? I think it would be false to even suggest that. Israel has consistently targeted Gaza and particularly its civilian population that have zero ability to evacuate, which is a violation of international law. And to try and bring the discourse back to Taysir is literally faltering into the Israeli narrative and discourse. And I think as reporting on this, it is really important to keep in mind and keep in focus the two million Palestinians, most of them refugees that have been under siege for 15 years, dealing with airstrike after the other, they're still not recovered from the brutal and savage bombardment that happened last summer with zero accountability on any military um, within Israel. And I think even if it was the target, the continued use of civilians as a weapon by the military, as collateral damage to pressure Palestinians to forget and let go of their right to freedom is a disservice to justice everywhere. It's, it's quite simply as that. Right. And uh, you were mentioning a moment ago, of course, the, uh, the Israeli upcoming Israeli election. It is, of course, um, mm -hmm. uh, election season in, in Israel. But, but besides that, I mean, what do you think uh, will be the response from uh, factions in the Gaza Strip like Hamas and Islamic Jihad? I think it's going to be the same response we've seen over the years. They're also going to try and retaliate in a way that they rally their own political support. And this is what's consistently happening, is that the pawns in this are the Palestinians that are seeking liberation from both settler colonial plunder and, and authoritarian regimes like the PNA and repressive regimes like Hamas. But then Hamas is located in Gaza, a place that has been under siege for 15 years, that has been bombarded and consistently targeted by the Israeli military. If Israel was able to bomb the West Bank, it would do the same. And it would say, I'm the terrorist. And it would say, every Palestinian is a terrorist. But they can't, because 60% of the West Bank is inhabited by settlers and settlements. And these are the contexts and nuances that we really need to delve into beyond what the Israeli military um, spokesperson is trying to get us into. Is this going to um, lead to, to an all-out war, do you think, on Gaza? I think this is dependent on a couple of factors. One is the ability of the Palestinian civil society to respond and showcase sol solidarity. 
The other is also on the way this is going to be reported on and shown in terms of the brutality that we continue to experience. And then third is the policymakers and decision makers like the U.S. that still continues to give military aid to Israel after killing Palestinians like Shirin Abu Afle, a journalist, and then trying to weaponize her usage of a camera as though she's a terrorist. And this is the trend and the theme. So I think if, if we continuously falter into this trap, we're really not going to get anywhere. And what's right, going to happen is that... Is there any is reason that for you to believe gonna... that that, in fact, is going to change? What's going to change? The support, for example, you were just mentioning the support that the U.S. gives to Israel. That's, that doesn't look like That's it's going to change at any point soon, is it? That's dependent on us. Our representatives owe us our demands. And when we make those demands... They, they have to either adhere or let go of their position. And I really think right now is a very testing moment for the global community, regardless of profession and regardless of position, whether you're going to showcase not just solidarity, but active action um, against this brutality that we're witnessing. We're done speaking about Gaza being bombed and asked which political faction or who Israel is targeting. Right now, we're really trying to move towards liberation, just as we've seen last summer um, during the Intifada of Unity. And I think right now, Palis I've said this last year, and it's, it's tormenting that we have to consistently say this, but not only are we at the final breath, we are being suffocated in the ICU unit. And that's what Israel is doing. Um, and right now, it's not just on Palestinian, what, how are Palestinians going to respond? Right now, it's on the world. How is the world going to respond? What about um, the, uh, the sort of uh, the usual players, if I can say that, uh, when it comes to mediation uh, and uh, when it comes to such issues uh, like uh, such events like this one that we've seen in Gaza? We've often seen the Egyptians be able to step in and play some sort of role um, in terms of calming down the, the rhetoric and the tensions, do you, do you expect uh, who can play a mediator right now? I think right now the only mediators that are playing any role, whether it's Egypt or otherwise, the tension they're trying to calm is the Palestinian confrontation towards our literal occupation by a military nuclear power. Um, Israel is the only state in this region that has nuclear weapons and somehow it continues to play victim. What they're trying to mediate is our continued confrontation. And we've seen Israel do this relentlessly by employing regional powers through their vulnerabilities and allyship that they're trying to build in order to kind of perpetuate their, their settler colonialism and accelerate it as well. And that's where we're witnessing an acceleration. Less is done. Gaza has been bombed enough times for any inkling of life there to grow up traumatized and destroyed. The negotiations by Egypt about electricity, let's recollect this is a 15 years in the making. It's been 15 years of Palestinians trying to convince Israel that they deserve electricity to carry on daily activities. Not just daily activities, but you have cancer patients and patients in hospitals that are unable to survive because of this injustice. So if you want to speak about the mediation, let's also bring in light the demand that's being asked for. So when Israel says it's assassinating Taisir Jabari, it's actually has been assassinating in a gradual killing, a very slow killing of 2 million Palestinians in Gaza. And that's what's happening. It's not this one moment because the news pegs say it is. Right. Uh, and we're just hearing, this is according to, in fact, the Reuters news agency, the Israeli army spokesman uh, has said this on the Gaza operation, quote, we haven't finished yet. Uh, what does that make you think about w where things will head to next? And what do you think the ultimate aim is um, for Israel this time around? I think what it reminds me of is at the same time when the spokesperson said um, uh, flatten Gaza during one of the wars. And it reminds me again of the, the terms that were used on and on by Israeli representatives and officials in terms of basically burying Gaza alive. And I think what this means is that they're not going to back down because we continue to tolerate their crimes, whether it's in Jenin, whether it's in Khan Yunus, or whether it's in Kalansawe uh, in 48, Palestinians are under an attack by a settler colonial regime that put a 13-year-old in prison, Ahmed Manasra, and treated him like a terrorist. And we continue to separate these events, but it's not. These, this is the systemic. What's happening is ethnic cleansing. 
In a, in a decade, maybe you won't see a Palestine, and maybe Israel will be the lessons of the crimes of the past. But what's happening right now is ethnic cleansing, and I think that's what's going to continue to happen. They'll flatten Gaza, and then they'll come for the West Bank, and then they'll finish off Palestinians with Israeli citizenship. And this is what we've been echoing, and it's 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 getting labored that we have to keep repeating this until it resonates. Uh, uh, Maryam, so far uh, I've not seen any uh, sort of reaction, perhaps not surprisingly, from the Palestinian Authority over in the in the occupied West Bank, and that is where you are. Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but have you seen anything from the from the Palestinian Authority? And do you expect uh, do you expect them to weigh in on this? I appreciate you asking that. Um, I haven't seen any responses from the Palestinian Authority either, and I don't expect any. Currently, this is an authoritarian regime that placed sanctions on Gaza in 2018 and then beat up Palestinian protesters in the West Bank that demanded the Palestinian Authority lift the sanctions. So the, the Palestinian Authority and Fatah in specific, the faction that is ruling the PA, uh, are also go undergoing their own internal strife over who's going to be the next president after the passing of Abbas, who has exceeded his own presidential term by more than a decade. So I don't expect any response from the PA except that of repressing any Palestinian civil society response in the West Bank. Uh, Mariam Barghouti, we'll leave it there, but we thank you so much for joining us on this uh, developing and breaking news story out of Ramallah and the occupied West Bank. Thanks so much.